After crocheting an entire outfit months ago, it was time to officially move on to level two. Now, me and knitting aren't really the best of friends. I've knitted a Hufflepuff scarf that was poorly completed and a scarf for my mother that was never completed. So scarf making is the extent of which my knitting knowledge resides. Knitting is way more complex than crochet and that's why I was terrified of this project, but it's time to conquer that fear and knit an entire outfit. This is what I thought this video was going to be about, but after numerous attempts and failures at creating one of the pieces for the entire outfit, I decided that it was best if I took the time and learned more about knitting to really tackle the project in the way I had in mind. This was my expectation, and this was my reality. And I'll admit, I was sad. I spent a long portion of the past couple weeks working on this skirt. I was disheartened when I finished it and it looked like beautifully colored mess. I even broke a needle in the process. So I decided to just stick with what I enjoy making the most and hopefully I'm good at cardigans. My first ever project was a cardigan, so it was only fitting that I started to conquer knitting with just that, a cardigan. The last time I knitted was December 2021, and everything that I knew about anything was gone from my mind. So I needed a refresher. Hello, my best educational friend. Here, I return to learn more from you. Before I worked on any project, even that skirt thingy I showed earlier, I spent time refreshing my mind with the world of knitting. After looking through a bunch of videos, I first learned how to do a long tail cast on, which I don't even know why there's so many different ways to cast on, but I guess the more I knit, the more I'll learn. I then did a refresher on how to do the knit stitch, the purl stitch, and eventually casting off. And man, I was honestly struggling. My grip was super tight since I'm new to this and automatically my hands were straining. I would remember to loosen my grip, but then it would just tighten up again. I worked on this little swatch thingy just to practice and it ended up a jumbled mess, but it was okay. After that, I worked on the skirt thingy and that too came out as a jumbled mess, but that's okay. I didn't learn what I did wrong either, but that's okay too. We're just gonna move on to making cardigans. For the first cardigan, I knew I wanted to make a long white oversized cardigan, but I didn't think I had enough yarn for that. So instead, I decided on a striped neutral toned cardigan that only required the yarn that I already had. Since cardigans are mainly made up of the same parts, I thought it would be pretty simple. Make a front panel, a back panel, two arm panels, two cuffs, a bottom ribbing, and a button band. After learning the rib stitch, I realized I could just continue knitting without having to sew the cuffs or bottom band onto the panels like in crochet. You can continue in crochet too, you would just have to crochet on the side to get to the top of the ribbing. I took all my measurements such as my shoulder width, arm length, arm circumference, wrist circumference, and then decided on how long I wanted the cardigan to be as I went along. Since I originated with crochet, figuring out measurements with knitting was confusing to me, since in crochet all I had to do was crochet a chain until it matched the length of what I needed it to be. But in knitting, since your chain or cast on stays on the needles, you can't just measure it. But I was not about to do gauge. I'm so sorry, but I don't have that patience. So what I did to figure out the proper measurements throughout each piece was measure the yarn until it was the length I needed it, then casted it onto the needle, then pushed the stitches onto the wire of the needle and brought it to the area in which it was for to see if it was the right size. This probably wouldn't work if you're making things for other people to their exact size or if you're using just regular knitting needles, but it worked for me, so I went with it. I'll learn gauge eventually though, I promise. I also kept bringing the pieces close to my body to see if the length was where I wanted it to be. And it's curling a lot because apparently I use stockinette stitch and stockinette stitch curls a lot. So once it's attached, the curling will go away. So it looks really small, but it's the right size for the front panel. But once I finished all the pieces, I began sewing them together. Sewing the pieces on is so different from crochet. Trying to figure out how to do it was making me want to cry, and I kept having to take apart the sewing jobs, which made me feel like a failure. And when I tried looking it up on YouTube, I was confused on what I was supposed to even look up. But I eventually found how to sew everything together with online resources. After I finished the cardigan, I took like a week off in order to bring life back to my hands because they hurt so bad during this process that even when I was trying to go to sleep, they would pulsate, and that was just a very painful experience. The 
The next two cardigans weren't originally going to be in this video. They were gifts for my friends and also a way for me to learn how to switch colors mid-project. So I made them based off of what my friends liked in terms of color. One of them loves pastel colors and the other one loves more dark colors but still enjoys a lot of brighter tones as well. I also made them the same way as the last cardigan except I wanted it to be oversized. So I made my cast on for this cardigan 90 instead of the 50 I did for the first cardigan. I made them both at the exact same time doing two back panels and then four front panels just so they could be done together. I didn't record much of this process because I was going to visit them within a week and trying to make two oversized cardigans in that short of a time period was questionable. Because I was living and breathing these cardigans, I didn't do anything else. I didn't drink water. I didn't stretch. I didn't move. And because of this, I hurt my back. So I didn't finish the cardigans in time and now I'm going to give it to them when they come over and visit me soon. But let this be a lesson that you don't have to learn because I just did for you. Take care of yourself, please. Keep your back straight while working or work on an elevated surface instead of the floor like I do. Don't let the end result cloud you from the life you live because you'll just end up with a bad back. So the first cardigan was my first attempt at a cardigan and I learned from the mistakes I made. The second and third cardigans were for my beautiful friends and gave me more experience. But the fourth cardigan, this one is all mine, baby. I wanted to go all out for this one, so I took the time to figure out a design for the cardigan that really fit my personality and style. I wanted it to be oversized with chunky sleeves and with cute buttons on it. I wanted it to be creative, but what did I really want? I first did a bit of research on colors and I kind of felt in love with color theory in the process. I also learned about color seasons, which is basically what color palettes work best for you based off your skin tone, eyes, hair, and your undertones. I'm around the dark and true autumn range, which is awesome because I absolutely love the colors in those palettes. I chose colors based off those and then headed to Michael's to get some yarn. I found yarn that were close to the colors I chose and then headed home to begin the cardigan. I played around with the design some more and had a hard time choosing, but eventually decided on this one. I thought it would be cool to break down everything I did from here on out, so if you want to remake this cardigan, then you can, especially if you've never knitted before. So here are some quick tutorials for you. To start knitting anything, you have to cast on. I used the long tail cast on for the cardigans in this video. The long tail cast on basically tells you how long the project will be with the long tail, if that makes sense. So first, you take the end of the yarn you want to use. Say you want to cast on 40 stitches. What you'll do is wrap the yarn around your finger 10 times, and then pick up the part where the last wrap ended. That's how long it needs to be for 10 stitches. To get to 40, just bend the yarn until the end hits the other part of the yarn and keep doing that three more times. At the end, you'll have how long the tail needs to be for 40 stitches. You can also guesstimate like I do, but it's better to guess and have a lot of yarn at the end than not having enough. After you have that figured out, you have to make a slip knot. To do so, just grab the yarn with both hands and push it together, which will form a loop. Then put your fingers inside the loop and pull the yarn through. Insert one needle into that loop and tighten the bottom by pulling both of the ends and you have your slip knot. To cast on your stitches, take the tail side of your yarn and put it inside your hand. Then you're going to put your thumb under that yarn and loop the yarn over your thumb like this. Then take your needle and push it into that loop on your thumb so the needle and your thumb are cuddled together. Then with your other hand, take that yarn that's connected to the ball of yarn and wrap it behind the same needle. Then push the loop on your thumb over the needle and pull the tail end of the yarn to create the stitch and there you have your second cast on. I'm going to show it to you one more time just in case.
Once you have the amount you need, it's time to knit. There's a wrong side and a right side of the project. The right side has an end like this where it's swirly and the wrong side has an end like this where it looks like tiny knot. To knit, all you have to do is push your needle into the loop from the bottom, making sure the needle is behind the needle with all the loops. Then take your yarn that's connected to your ball of yarn and loop it counterclockwise around the needle you just inserted. Then take that needle and push it under the loop you first inserted it into and drag it up and off the other needle. That's the knit stitch. I'm gonna show you a couple more times. If you only do knit stitches for your whole project, it will look like this, which is called the garter stitch. To purl, take your needle and insert it into the loop downwards and in the front. Then take the yarn that's attached to the ball and loop it counterclockwise around the needle you just inserted. Then take that needle and push it up into the loop we entered it into, making sure the yarn we looped around doesn't fall and drag it off the needle. If you do one row of only knit and then one row of only purl for your entire project, it will look like this, which is called the stockinette stitch. Also, ignore that loop hanging off. I did that on purpose and it is of no importance. To do a ribbing effect, all you have to do is do one knit and then one purl and then one knit and then one purl until the end of the row. So here I did one knit stitch, then I moved the yarn to the front to do a purl stitch. You have to move it to the front to be able to loop it for the purl stitch. After the purl stitch, I move the yarn back so I can do the knit stitch. And once you get to the end of the row, you just repeat it for as thick as you want the ribbing to be. If you end on a purl stitch, start the next row with a knit stitch. If you end on a knit stitch, start the next row with a purl stitch. That way everything will look nice and lovely. To add a new color, make sure you're doing it on the right side every time you add a new color. All you have to do is start as if you're about to knit, so insert your needle into the loop knitwise, then grab your new color and loop it around the needle. Then finish the knit stitch with that color. Then for the rest of the row, continue knitting with the new color. The first stitch will be loose until the third row, so finish your row and then turn your work. The next row I'm doing is in all purl stitches. At the end, purl the loose end like the rest of the work and pull the ends to tighten. Turn your work and continue on doing what you need to do for your project. To cast off, knit the first two stitches. Then insert your needle into the bottom loop on the opposite needle and pull that over the top loop. Doing this takes the stitches off your needle to end the project. Do this for every stitch until you have one more loop on your needle. Then at the end, grab the yarn attached to the ball of yarn and loop it over your needle. Pull the bottom loop over the top loop and then you can cut the yarn and pull it to secure. And that's it. That's basically everything I did for this cardigan. You also need to know how to increase for the arms, but I'll show you that in the arm section. Here are my measurements for reference. For my cardigan, I began with the back panel. 
I casted on 70 stitches with the long tail cast on, starting with the bottom ribbing color. I put it up to my shoulders to see if it was a good oversize for me, and it was. I didn't want it to be as oversized as the last two cardigans I did, and I didn't want it to be as fitted as the first cardigan I did. I did 5 rows of rib stitch, which is knit 1, purl 1, making the bottom ribbing out to be 2 inches wide. After I finished with the bottom ribbing, I switched to my green color on the right side of the project, and I did stockinette stitch, which is one row of knit on the right side and one row of purl on the wrong side. I did that for a total of 64 rows, which made the back panel stockinette section to be 22 inches. The back panel was a total of 24 inches long and 36 inches wide. For the front panels, I originally did a cast on of 40 stitches, but I realized that if I did two panels for the front with 40 stitches, that would be a total of 80 stitches, which means the front panels would be too big because the back panel is only 70 stitches wide. So I had to undo everything I did for the front panels and start it over. I casted on 30 stitches for each front panel and copied the back panel pattern exactly. There are no differences between the three besides the cast on amount and the colors. The front panel was a total of 14 and a half inches in width and 24 inches long. For the arms, I started them the exact same way I did with the front and back panels. I did a cast on of 22 and wrapped that around my wrist to make sure it was the right size and then I did the ribbing normally. Now for the arms, I did one row of knit stitches, one row of purl stitches, and then I got ready to increase. I had to increase because the 22 cast on wasn't going to be enough to fit my arms. Plus, I wanted the arms to be chunky and balloony, so I increased for five rows only on the knit rows. Once I got to the third row of the arms, I knitted three stitches. Once I got to the fourth stitch, I added an increase. To increase, insert the needle as if you were about to knit and then wrap the yarn over as if you're about to knit. Then continue the knitting motion, but don't push the yarn off the needle like you usually would. Instead, twist the needle towards the back and insert it downwards into the same loop that's on the opposite needle. Wrap the yarn over the needle again like you did earlier and pull the needle through the loop. Then push it off the opposite needle. That's an increase. I increased into every fourth stitch. So I knit three and then increased and then knit three and then increased until the end of the row. After that row, I did a row of only purl stitches with no increases. Then when I got back to the knit row, I knit three and then increased one and then knit three and then increased one until the end of the row. I did this for a total of five knit rows. After the increased rows, I knitted the rest of the arm sleeve as normal until it was the length I desired. And when I say normal, I mean one row knit, no increases, one row purl, no increases. The arm was a total of 10 inches of stockinette stitch, 12 inches in total length and 26 inches wide. After finishing the arms, it was time to sew everything together. I started with the front and the back panel, which was pretty simple. What I did was align both panels with their casted off ends touching each other. Then I took my darning needle and cut a long piece of yarn to sew everything together. I inserted my darning needle with the yarn into the closest V-loop stitch to the casted off edge of one of the panels and pulled the yarn through that. Then I inserted the darning needle into the closest V-loop stitch in the other panel. I like to do it with the front panel on the top of the back panel. I do this until the end, pulling as I go so it'll leave this section looking seamless.
After that, it was time to attach the arms. I took a stitch marker and inserted it into the middle stitch of the arm and then attached that to the corner of the back panel and the front panel where they were stitched together. I then took even more stitch markers and attached them to one side so it could align properly. I messed up on this part so many times on my first cardigan, so take your time. To sew it together, I just inserted my darning needle into the closest V to the cast off edge of the arm and pull it through. But for the other panel, I pushed my darning needle inside the middle of the stitch to find a little bar stitch thingy inside and pull through that. I went back and forth to attach the arm. To sew the side of the arm in the cardigan, I aligned everything once more using stitch markers and began sewing. For both parts of the panels, you're going to go into the little bar stitches that are inside the stitches. After everything is attached, I then added the button band. It's pretty easy, but you have to make sure you have a long enough cord to do the button band. I'm not sure you'd be able to make it without circular needles. To make the button band, all you have to do is insert your needle into the side of the front panel and then wrap your yarn around the needle and then pull it through, making loops on your needle. You can go into every space, but I tend to skip random spaces since my cord isn't that long. Once I reached the end, I turned my work around and went into each stitch with knit one, purl one to make a ribbon effect. If you end on a purl stitch, start the next row with a knit. If you end on a knit stitch, start the next row with a purl stitch. On the second row, I added the buttonholes. To make the buttonholes, I first added a stitch markers to where I wanted the holes to be. I made them eight stitches apart. All you have to do is knit and purl until you reach the stitch with the stitch marker. Then insert your needle into that stitch and the stitch underneath it and knit or purl those two stitches together. That's all you have to do. This makes a little gap in the middle where your button will fit into. This is also called a decrease. After I did that decrease, because it was one purl and one knit that I decreased, the next stitch is a purl stitch. So I have to do a purl stitch since this little bump here indicates that this is a purl stitch. I did a total of three rows of the button band before casting off, which is about one inch that the button band is. After I sewed on my buttons, I was done. To sew buttons, I have a tutorial I used linked in the description, as well as other tutorials that helped me learn how to knit in case you want more in-depth help. The last thing I had to do was weave in my ends. To do this, I just inserted one of the ends into a darning needle and weaved them into the sides where there were loops. I then pushed the darning needle in a spiral into the loop and pulled the ends through. Then I did it on the other side of the loop, pulled it through, and then cut off, and my cardigan was finally done. So here are all the cardigans. I weaved in all of the ends, and I added buttons to a couple more of them, and now I'm gonna show you what they look like. So this was the first cardigan that I did as shown in the video. Um, it is, there's a lot of mistakes on this cardigan. For one, the armhole area is pretty tight. 
I should have made the front and the back just a tiny bit more longer so that it won't be directly under my underarm. But if you wanted to make like a more tight fitted cardigan like this, then I would suggest just making the arm a little bit bigger just so it, it's not uncomfortable right here because it is pretty like you can feel it and it's just like you just want to pull on it so the second thing i don't like about this cardigan is that the front is very small um i prefer having my cardigan kind of like a little bit more towards the center and this one is kind of just hanging on the sides and even if I did add buttons, it would have been just kind of pulling it and it would look kind of awkward. The third thing I don't like is how big the button band is. I kind of wish I made a smaller button band, but then this part would have been even smaller, so. But besides that, the pattern is pretty simple. It's pretty warm and cozy, um, which is interesting because when I was making it, I didn't like the feeling of the yarn at all, but now it's very soft even though I haven't washed it or um, did that thing that people do. Block, I didn't block it yet. Okay, so this is the second cardigan that I made. This one and the next one is actually gifts for my friends, but I wanted to show them in the video since they were also kind of practice for me on making cardigans. Um, I love the length of it. I love how it's like kind of higher in the front and it kind of drifts towards the back even though I did the front and the back the exact same way. And at first I didn't have buttons on here, but I decided to add buttons. So this is what it looks like when it's buttoned up. And I love how drapey it is. And you can kind of pull it in the back, like to have it like fully go down and like be drapey, I guess. I don't know the words for this, but it's really cute. Um, I love how soft it is. Two things I do not like, unfortunately, and I feel bad for my friends about this, but the first thing is that it is very, this type of yarn sheds so much. And I didn't know this until I was like halfway done making the cardigans, but um, this yarn is so soft, but I don't know why it sheds so much. It's alpaca wool with acrylic, but you would literally have to have a lint roller with you all the time if you were to wear this, especially if you're wearing something black on the inside. So this is the second one that I made for another friend. It's almost the exact same pattern, just different colors. And I, I feel like adding the buttons on here really upgraded it because I didn't have buttons on it before. And I don't know, it just, it solidifies it when there's buttons. So I added some buttons on there. But this is what it looks like, super cute. Now this is the last cardigan and also the cardigan that is for me. I, like I said before, I designed them based off of my um, season colors, which is in between true autumn and dark autumn. So I made this just for myself and I love it. I thought it was gonna turn out so ugly when I made that design, but it's actually really cute and it's not itchy. I used the perfect wool for this. It's like a wool acrylic one, and it's literally so perfect, so cute. Absolutely ready for fall with this cardigan, and I love it, so yeah. You can pull it all the way down and just have it regular like this, or you can kind of pull it to maybe like drape off the shoulder, or you know, have it draped like the others and just have it really baggy like this. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.